We are back. Welcome to the Leadership Launchpad Project. I'm Rob Kalvaroski, and today I am flying solo. It's long the long weekend for Thanksgiving, and so Susan had a lot of work to do up at her cottage, so we got her out the door early. And today, I mean, I usually start with a quote, and so I have a few things that I want to just address first. We have a few numbers and statistics to bring on the show today. So there was a recent study published by Donald Soul and actually former guest Charlie Soul out of MIT, and they say leadership is the best predictor of toxic culture. Following up on the study that I like out of Sweden on destructive leadership, that's, that also claims that 65.1% of the workforce experiences destructive leadership. And the sole paper goes on to say that approximately only 1% of the total population qualifies psychopaths, slightly higher among managers, which suggests that the majority of managers struggling with toxic behaviors might benefit from coaching. And so for me, what I want to take away and we'll get uh, our guests' thoughts is th the first takeaway for me is that the vast amount of asshole bosses don't want to be toxic leaders. They just don't have enough self-awareness to understand their impact on the workforce. So that being said, we have our guests from Conscious Lead Life, Dale Allen and Trevor Stevenson. Dale and Trevor, how are you? Fantastic. Thank yeah, you. So good. A little more goosebumpy now that you shared those uh, statements, but... Yeah, feeling great. Thank you. Yeah, and so why don't we start there, um, Trevor? While you're there, what what thoughts do you have on those stats? I love what you're sharing, Rob. That <clears throat> and we were just sharing this in a graduation we hosted this morning. It's like people don't set out to be assholes, right? People don't set out and just say, ah, "Whose life can I ruin today?" You know, I, I think for the most part, generally, <laughs> I think it's that way. And so it really does come down to that consciousness and, 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 and the awareness of how am I showing up? And, and even if we have that sense, because a lot of us do. And so that's why we go home at the end of the day and we're just so exhausted and so depressed and so frustrated with ourselves because we didn't even want to show up that way. Mm -hmm. And so we have to scroll a little deeper into, which I think is the work. Where, where people like, oh, Netflix, oh, can of beer, let me go there, that's easy, instead of digging a little deeper into like, what is it that had me show up that way, right? Was it the first morning when I rolled out of bed and stepped in my child's vomit or dog shit or something that just set the day off? Or, or was it that thing that my wife said or didn't say, or my kids being this way, trying to get out the door, or was it traffic or, 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 and it might be like, Check, check, check every one of those, right? And so um, I, I just, the statistics are so important, as is the, the, the sort of the lens with which we look at them. And it's so, so like, that's great. I believe it. And now what is causing that? And what can, what can each of us do as a leader? Because we are all leaders. What can we do to create a shift for it? So that's a great question, Dale. What do you think? What can we do as leaders to create the shift? Oh my gosh. You know, I well, I think so much, but I also think it's it's so little. I, I think the 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 first thing is um is do you want to like do you want to do something different? You know, Rob, when you were talking to Trevor just now and uh, whilst I was listening, I thought, um, I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if um if, if that's what we all got excited about, where we don't want to be a boss hole, that we we want, you know, where we're like, I, I want to, you know, if I woke up this morning and said, how could I make someone's life more wonderful today? And and also, so I think there's the, the thing that we need to do is we need to want to be the leader who um, is aware of the impact that we're having. We want to be the leader who um, knows how to recover because you're not perfect and we get that so am I you know like I'm right there with you so it's more like I know that there's going to be a blunder I'm going to say something that's not going to land the way I intended um, but I'll, but I, I do practice how I could recover 
Because I think that's why we have toxicity is because people don't practice recovery, right? I think that's something huge. It's totally true. And actually what I've started to notice recently is the rise of the passivity or the passive aggressiveness. And that's like the quiet quitting, although that's not really new. But also the other day I was reading on LinkedIn, there was an article on quiet firing, which again is not new, but it's like basically you're not firing the person, but you're making their life miserable. So they quit. And it's yeah. and it kind of goes along with the ghosting stuff that's happening both on in the job hiring and I guess getting market where companies are ghosting people after acceptance letters and applicants are ghosting companies after acceptance letters. And so I guess, Dale, where would you say about that is like what's coming or why are so many folks afraid to open a hard conversation? Mm-hmm. I think we're afraid of um, of hurting people, but we don't recognize that by not having the conversation, we're already creating harm anyway, right? So we're already hurting ourselves because we're ruminating. We know that ruminating is very expensive, especially when we're ruminating on something that makes us feel bad, feel shitty, feel ashamed, or feel like we're blamed or blaming ourselves and where we feel guilty about. So we know it's an expensive process, but we don't have the awareness that that is already painful. And so the not having the conversation is just as painful as as what you think it will be to have it. And and so I think if we bring the awareness to that and also answer probably what people need is, yeah, but how can I have the the conversation with more ease and grace and comfort? Yeah. Right. And I think it's truly that the, the work is you said it about coaching. Like it's like so coaching, how do we help people practice having conversations in, in a way where you don't hold up shame, blame and guilt? Like we don't always, we don't know how to do that. You know, we don't practice that. It's not usually a practice. And, it, and I think, Rob, if I may, it's, it's that we also, <clears throat> we have a fear of stepping into these conversations with, and because we are projecting the outcomes, that it's going to be a conflictual conversation, that it's going to end up worse, that, that I won't know what to do. I won't find my way out of it. And it happens all the time. It happens in, all of our relationships, right? In marriage, not our marriage, of course, but some <laughs> marriage. Um, actually, I wrote a poem about this called I Hate to Push You Away. I hate to push you away. Um, and mm. when we do that, right, it's like, I'm going to just treat you so shitty until you want to leave. Although it's I that I want to leave. And and you look at these relationships that that exist in our lives of like or, or you know I, and i think it's maybe a, a less evolved relationship i think of my like teens and 20s and things like that where i didn't have the courage to just say you know what this isn't really working and i don't see it going very far and so i will do we didn't have ghosting back then because you know we didn't have phones but uh, how old are you <laughs> you, you sent a telegram <laughs> to your <laughs> girlfriend <laughs> Go. <laughs> um <laughs> So yeah, it's it's it, it's not new, like you said. Yeah, and it's it's something that I mean, we're we're running a few conflict management courses, and that's one thing that we absolutely get folks to do is get out on the ice, or as Brene Brown goes on the dance floor, and just let it rip in an environment that's low risk, and yeah. none of the scenario like. I was I put together the scenarios for it and it was like everything I experienced in my career. And I'm like, none of these things are like abnormal activities. It's like, oh, you know, you're you get a new department head and they change the direction of your department, or they cut like some of the folks in your group, or you know, none of these things are off the wall, insane conversations. It's like literally leaders experience these on a daily basis. And I think that's the piece. And also the self-work, right, is knowing yourself and just being able to step into the conversation and just be like, hey, you know, I am what I am. And what Dale was mentioning, right, is like if I say something wrong, I can always pick up the pieces, but I'm just being who I can be for you. And that's often the best we can do. Yeah. And I love, you know, there's what what people, I think, 
don't recognize which holds them back as well and, and what's so valuable about your podcast and others like it. And, and we see it in our work, right? As everybody comes into our programs and they and and they're quite reticent to share because they think, oh no, this is only me reacting this way. <laughs> You know, like no one else can be thinking these thoughts and, and it's only whatever, 10 minutes into our program, right? And everybody's like, no, you too? Oh my God. And then it's like, come on, it's open. And, it, and that's when the growth and development happens, right? But then, but Robin, Trevor, don't you think that's something where um, we must feel that we are so alone in our experience? And then, so Rob, when you named those different scenarios, you're like, yeah, everyone and their mom's experienced that, right? And And multiple times. So I think there's something too that we're not aware that we're going through these things and we're not aware that everyone is going through them. And, and so we're trying to solve for something that we think we're alone in the world with that we don't know who to speak to. When you could just turn to your right and go, oh, you? <laughs> like it's, oh, you, this happens to you too? Thank goodness we can talk about it. You know that way? It's it's totally true, Dale. And it's it was funny, like literally two days ago, I was on a group call and one of the leaders, she's having some issues with one of her people. And she's like, I'm probably the only one who's experiencing a person like this. And I was like, wait, <laughs> hands up in the room if you've had a person like this. And like 80% of the leaders, hands up. And I was like, you're not alone. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. And so I think that has to do with our, that's where our fear comes from, too, is that you know, I'm not going to speak it because I'm the only one in that. I don't want to be excluded, right? right. Yeah. It's, to it's totally true. And I mean, we didn't get here now, but let's get here now. So for both of you, like obviously you run a leadership coaching company. Do you want to tell us a little bit about you and your company? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So who are you, Dale? Talk to us. <laughs> That's a deep <laughs> well, question. I'm, you're right. I'm Dale. At my core. At my core, I'm um, a lover, a lover of life. I'm... I I am um, I had goosebumps when you opened with those quotes because um our our work is about prevention our work is about um inviting people to create a backbone of posture around and and an ache to prevent toxic conversations toxic relationships toxic environments so work environments homes and communities and so wanting to disrupt and um, almost disturb the you know the bottom of the ocean in our in our souls that have so that we stir up that ache to go oh yeah I want it to be a prevention but we know the prevention isn't sexy we usually like to do something after we after it's already you know the shit has a fan we're like okay now I got to do something um, so um, but we really are about you know bringing more people together to do the work of creating environments creating conversations because it starts there right well, it really starts conversations in our heads first that are um, less toxic, so that our words, our conversations are, and so that impacts our relationships, our workplaces, our homes, and our community. I love and so it. that's the work that we do. I love it. Trevor, how about you? Who are you? I'm a, I'm a philosophical vagabond. So I, uh, I, I love to just wander this earth and uh, travel as deep in my soul. And it was, it was such a, a huge part of my own evolution, kind of getting away from the the small town in which I was raised and, and all that comes with that, all of the conditioning and, and going out and just recognizing, Hey, I can show up. I can be whoever I want. And Oh, I like that little bit of that guy, Rob, that I met, you know, at the backpackers hostel, he was really, he just like stepped out and talked to people. I'm going to be more that way. And Oh, I met Dale, you know, in, in Malawi and, and she was just so vivacious and I'm going to be more that way, you know? And, um, and to have grown that way and then to start to give back in that way, just just recognizing that as we wander this earth everywhere, as we were just talking about, we're just encountering people having the same human experience in different bodies, in different groups, and that that all of this wiring and the amygdala and all the rest of it is just all wired up the same. And, and to be able to recognize and, and share little bits with people that... Um, it's okay. We've all had those 20, 30, 40, 50 years of conditioning that's gotten us here. And we're here. Congratulations, you know. And 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 if we want to go somewhere else, then we need to do like get those synapses firing a little bit differently. And so what does that look like? And and you know, do you wanna do you wanna link arms and, and do some of that? So I guess yeah, I have a, I have a passion for 
uh extremism and fun and like extremism but like jumping out of planes and off bridges and that kind of thing and and mountain biking and and stuff like that but i love to combine all of that just to bring an energy you know with people i love it and dill you mentioned the work about changing ourselves as leaders and stepping into these conversations and and the mindset work like do you want to tell us about that like where does the work start for you mm. Um, it starts for me in being able to feel. We, we've spent a lot of our time um, and our lives fairly numb to um, how, how situations that we are in have us feel. And we, um, because of that disconnect, I find we've got the intellect, we've got the words, we've got that, the intellectual understanding of things. Um, it really shifts when you can feel something. And so when, when there is something that is triggering to you, if something triggers your happiness, it's so clear that we know that, you know, like I love to dance. I love right now when music comes on, even just me thinking of it right now, Rob, I can feel it in me, right? It's really easy when something triggers happiness, when something triggers sadness, disconnection, disappointment, anger, frustration. Um, I know what frustration feels like, but I often um, skip it. Like I kind of skip, you know, just kind of sitting in it, like soaking in it to figure out what the meaning is. And, and I think that um, that connection is, is missing for us, especially because we are so busy that we, we don't um, take time, create the space for um, quiet and um, being able to receive from our experiences, not just take from them, but receive from them. Um, so to make meaning and to figure out um, what do I need to learn from this in order to move forward, to be able to stand up and lead, to be able to um, honor what's being called for from me. And sometimes it's raw, raw, it's rest. Like what if that is what leadership looks like in this moment is rest, right? And so we know that our, you know, we've got people who are burning out. And, and, and so, so to me, that is key. It's like, um, can we connect with how our feelings or emotions so dictate what we end up thinking and how that so dictates then what we say and it so dictates what we do. So making that connection is key. I love that. And it's so we're totally aligned there. And maybe Trevor, let's talk about burnout for a minute. Like exactly what Dale mentioned, right? Is a lot of us as leaders were stepping up for our people or we're, you know, we have 50 things to do. I know my to-do list is incredibly long. Um, like how do we start to give ourselves rest? Yeah. It it, it's it's all that that you said and it's this perception of keeping up as well right well rob didn't stop working until five o'clock i can't stop you know and especially in this virtual world where everybody sees everybody working and sending messages and and working at different hours and maybe they have that person's having a completely balanced life and working from noon to 8 p.m or something right but now i'm getting that email at eight so so i think the it, it goes right back to what Dale said, Rob, if, if we want to change that, it's, it's, we have to pause and reflect and say, I get this, you know, at like, I've got about an hour left before the bus comes home with the boys on it. And I'm like, but the list is still so long. And I get this nervous tension and I haven't gotten, like I've been in meetings back to back and I haven't stood up and I haven't moved, but I can't possibly now because they're going to be home and then everything. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and I can feel the cortisol just kind of like surging in my veins. And then I'll, at some point I'll just like, oh, <laughs> you know, I'll just, I'll just have to get up and, and move. And if we only just honor that, if we only just stop and walk away and get outside and breathe, it's that it, it's knowing what that feeling is and feeling it creeping in because they're there. The energy is there within us. The thoughts are starting to come because we know better. We've read all the HBR articles and the Brene Brown books, and we've listened to your podcasts and, and so much and so much, right? And so it's not like we don't have the knowing. It's we don't have the practice of it. And so I think that's the consciousness part is, is attaching those two things. You know, um, is it my Angelou who, who has it said, uh, once, I, once you know better, do better? <laughs> and, and I think that's a, there's a link there, right? We do know, we do know better. And we and we don't always just honor it. And so it's mm -hmm. that's the that's the courageous part because it's like so often it's how will I be perceived? 
right? Or how can I possibly get it all done? Or will it all balance at the end of the day or the month or whatever? And so there's a courage around that to honor what's what you're feeling. Totally. I, I love this. And Dale, that's what I want to ask you, right? Is like, there's so much information out there and the stats and the stories and all that stuff, right? But often, like we're seeing it, right? Like two thirds of leaders are destructive. And how many leadership podcasts, how many leadership books, like we know, we should know at least how to do it right, at least from a book learning perspective. Like how do we connect the dots for people? I think, Rob, I think what's missing is um, more community. Like talking about that, even if so, so really, I mean, I, I I find coaching to be so helpful. Like um, I find being in conversations like this, I find, you know, you, I know you offer group sessions. So do we in those conversations where people can actually, um, it's like, it's like testing an idea, right? It's like throwing it just the way that you would if you were launching a new product. If you were to say to launch the next version of yourself, and, and you could be with others who were doing the same and you could speak about what is happening. I think that would that would accelerate us being able to see what we're missing is the sight, our capacity to see who we're being because we don't have the space for it. And, and I do think that that makes a huge difference because like you're saying, it's not like it's not about being able to Google. We always say that the work that we do is beyond what you can Google, because if you want to know how to delegate, go Google. I'll tell, Google will tell you everything. <laughs> it's, it's what's the work that has to happen for you personally? What's the personalized version of that? What does it mean to, you know, even when we were saying, um, you know, getting to your feelings. So people are like, yes, so what? I can feel it. What do I do with that? But really having a process to actually, you know, to, to actually make meaning of it and to do something with it is what makes a difference. And I think creating the environments and having the environments for that really matters. I, I think a lot um, because people process in their head. And they process the way they've always processed. So even if intellectually, I read, you know, HBR article tells me that I need to do these three things to not be a toxic boss. Well, right? I may know that. But then the next minute I realize that I have just sent, you know, this, this uh, email to my team saying, you know, we just missed the deadline. And, and boss number one, our big boss has asked me for it. But it's better everyone staying here right till 430. I don't care if you, you're trying to fly away for Thanksgiving. You know, and I just, I just, but I just read the article. And even as I'm typing it, I'm like, I, I know this is not what I'm supposed to do, but I'm screwed. And so I don't know what else to do, send, right? So it's not that people don't know. I think that um, creating the environments where you, you check yourself, that is beyond what you've done in your head for the amount of years that you've been on this earth becomes important. I think these kinds of, kinds of environments where you're in coaching relationships that are designed to help you reflect in a way that is different from their self-reflection that keeps you in Boswell land, right? Yeah, I love I like this. It. Absolutely. I love that idea, Rob. Sorry, can I, can I just double down on that? The idea of a, a product launch, right? <laughs> Launching a new version of yourself. And so <laughs> who's your test market, right? It's like, I got, you know, I got my buddies or I got my coaching group or whatever, you know, and Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to try a total openness or I'm going to, Try total vulnerability kind of thing and, and see what that feels like in that in that container. That's neat. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's interesting, right? Because and and this is how I sort of perceive it. And it's very much around a few weeks ago when we had a Dr. Richard Schwartz on, and it's very much understanding which is truly you as self and which is you as your parts which are the managers or the firefighters, right? And that's where, you know, your boss sends you an email and says, hey, Rob, you missed the deadline, you're horrible. And you're like, oh, triggered. And now it's, you're in firefighting mode. And that's where those emails go out, like, you guys got to get this done, you know, blah, 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 right? But that's not self. And it's identifying that who are you actually are versus who are these other parts of you that come out in various moments. Mm, exactly. And, and some of those are useful at times um, and, and sometimes not so useful, right? And it's how do we catch ourselves at that moment between? And so we really work to take that, you know, because there's stimulus and reaction or, or stimulus and reaction. <laughs> and so we really strive with this work that we all do 
is to to create space between stimulus and and maybe it's action versus reaction then right and and this is all the where where does self live based on what that stimulus that trigger is what would the self do the big s it's always about the big s (laughs) (laughs) so maybe let's let's ask you then and i love this question always but it's like what are some of the common mistakes you see in leaders and how do folks avoid those mistakes? I I think it's that that piece of either the the lack of awareness and not being conscious of when I'm triggered. It's, it's, It's not realizing that those happen all day, every day to everyone. We're all being triggered all the time. And, and, and it's sort of like this, like demystifying that, that you are, you are somehow unique to this, or even that they're actually happening. And this, and this isn't what you have to be reactive to in, in every place and every stage of life. It's like, you don't have to react to all of those things. Um, so I think that's, that's a mistake of not being aware of and and you know and, and I say it as my own journey as well, of course, as a practitioner of um, going through life and not realizing we are reacting to something out there, and that we actually have choice. And I think that's the the kind of the, the number two is then when we when we do realize it, if we realize it, not thinking that we have choice, and then. And then we can slip into that victim mentality. Well, I can't believe my boss is saying this. Why? Why is there traffic at this hour? You know, why won't my kids just get it? Why? You know, why? Uh, nothing's wrong. Ever. <laughs> I can't even come up with anything. You see. Um, and so. Right. 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 <laughs> um, and and so, uh, learned helplessness. I guess, right, is that the world is happening to me. And um, and then the, the courage piece, so that courage to um, make the choice of, of action, of doing it differently, of, of, of acting counter to the way that I've been conditioned, to maybe the way that my environment, that toxic environment is. Maybe I'm just a member of that environment, not the person kind of creating it. And um, the courage to step in and, and stand in the fire. And, and I think be, being miss, another miss is that sort of being there that way for other people, being present to all that they're experiencing, recognizing. So as that boss hole or anyone, any leader, recognizing that everyone else around us is having all triggers all day and, and maybe a heck of a lot more exciting than what yours are (laughs) and 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 so not having the empathy to realize that how they're showing up is yes the conditioning of the last 40 years and yes what happened this morning and and yes how they lost someone in covid or in that war or lost their whatever pet this morning It, it doesn't matter but i think that 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 is a big mistake that all of us make is is and uh, I'll speak from the eye and I'm thinking of my parenting now is not being there not being present not being patient and slow enough to realize all that they have going on the person that's right in front of me do you have anything to add to that mm-hmm. uh, I uh, one common mistake is that we uh, we can focus on using criticism versus curiosity and, and as, you know, when we're leading, like it doesn't matter if it's leadership by position, just, um, but as a human in the human experience, we know that things won't always be perfect. And when we go from those places of those moments of imperfection, we go to a place of criticism versus curiosity. Um, then we spend time in criticism sounds like blame, shame, guilt. And we waste a lot of time there. We can't, we get stuck there because that actually takes us in a downward spiral. And we're actually trying to move forward. So we're going down instead of moving forward. That, and, and I find that then um, that translates to how we treat people because we'll treat people from that place. Then there's a, another common mistake is that we, um, if we tend to treat people better than we would treat ourselves when those issues happen, 
that is also um, to me a common mistake where we'd say, no, 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 you know, I've got much more patience because it's them. I'm much, I'm much kinder because it's my team. You know, at home, I'm a totally different person. Right? <laughs> and and so I, I think that's a mistake because it's like, then where do we need to, to channel our attention? If we know how to do it out there, then let's do it here. Let's just do that more. So I think, you know, being that, bringing that congruency is really important as well. Um, and then, and I, I, I also think that um, a mistake that we make is that we, we don't actively seek out um, conflict. Um, and, and what I mean by that is if we were to look at how we run our days, um, conflicts happen all the time, which means not the fire of conflict. That's just um, that's the heat that's created. That's say, you know, I'm I'm upset with you, and I'm all of that I'm harboring is creating like my you know my heart's beating fast, my pulse is going fast, and my energy is like I feel hot in my body. Um, I my breath is shallow and short. My head is starting to pound. That's the fire of conflict. But conflict is just a difference. As the simplicity is, it's a difference. So you said something I don't agree. That's a difference. I woke up 10 minutes later, um, and now that's completely changed my whole day. That's a difference. Uh, if we were to, to seek out um, conflict, like the understanding of conflict in our days, I think we would have a little bit more peace where we go, I expect that there will be differences today. I expect it. I just know what's going to happen. I'm going to wake up. Someone's going to hand me something five minutes later than I expected. And, and if we were to watch those moments to see how we are with them, I think we would, we would have less fire and less anger um, when we are in, um, you know, in differences of opinion. I think we would have it. We would totally do it differently. I love that. That's really interesting perspective on, on conflict. <laughs> I thought you were just going to tell me to walk around telling people they're bad or something. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. You can do that too, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Let the learning begin, right? That's right. <laughs> All righty. So this is our, our favorite question to ask on the show, which is, what do you want your legacy as a leader to be? And I'll let, yeah, whoever wants to go first can go for it. Mm, I would love to... I think of what I'd love to be known for. Um, the legacy that I'd like to to leave and to live, to continue to live, is um, is just kind of inviting this this same ache um, for humanity, like that this ache for uh, wanting to understand why we do the things that we do, with with such an openness, such a curiosity that we don't have to fight about it, um, that we don't have to argue for it. That we don't have to defend our defensiveness. Um, so this this ache for um, really to to reduce our suffering, the harm that we do to each other, because we just because we don't even understand ourselves. And so the legacy I want to be known for is that um, there's there's more of us um, who have that desire to do the work and not see it as work as we know it, but it's actually like exciting to do this archaeological dig on ourselves, right? The, you know, that the archaeology of the self where um, you go and you find that that piece of you. It's like the missing piece like an archaeologist would and you shine it off and you rub it off and you see all of its beauty and, and all of the undulations in there and who you are and that you, you see that as the missing piece and that you've now discovered it and you can now complete the puzzle and that you wouldn't shy away from that that you'd, you'd want to promote it, that you would want to uh, give it all of its attention. And then that would allow you to show up in the world. That is the legacy I'd love to leave. Wow. I love that. Trevor, how about you? I was thinking about this, Robin. I was thinking, you know, legacy in my parenting and my partnering and, and in, in my coaching and the work I do in the world. And I, I think it... It really, what I aspire to uh, as a legacy is just to have people experience more fun and freedom. And I realize for myself, when I'm at my best and, and in my practice of this work that we do, it's that's what I'm getting. Life is like there's more connections, more ease. Like, yeah, I take that second, that 30 seconds of courage to enter into that conversation, but that is just easier. 
instead of living with it here for hours, days, years of my life, you know, with it swirling over and, and, and being afraid to have the conversation. And so nothing changes. It just, I create that disease or that disease within myself. And so, um, I, I think to, for, for people to be conscious and courageous to, uh, I would like that to, uh, be a legacy, knowing that that leads to more fun and freedom. I want to hold that up there, that this is possible. And here, here's the stuff that you have to do to get there. It's incredible. And it's such a great conversation. And for folks out there, you can check out Dale and Trevor at consciously.life. Consciously.life, yeah. Consciously.life. Is there anywhere else you want folks to follow you or find you at? All the usual places, you know, or on LinkedIn is that, and on Facebook is that. And, um, you know, I think, yeah, if people want to find us, come find us. The World Wide Web will get you there. <laughs> Instagram as well, consciously.life on Instagram, yes. Yeah. And we'll, yeah, we'll absolutely drop those links in the podcast notes. And then obviously for us, you can head on over to EliteHighPerformance.com for all your leadership development needs, psych safety, conflict management, and more. And then also please hit subscribe to the Leadership Launchpad Project on your favorite podcast platform as well. We've just been listed on Amazon Music. So head on over if you want to listen to us on Alexa. It's totally <laughs> available now. So check that out. Dale and Trevor, any last words that you'd like to leave our folks with? Yeah. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. It just goes a long way. Yeah. I, I think as you start to dive into this work and start uncovering parts of ourselves, we we can often want to like, whoa, cover that back up. And and I think it's it's also just that knowing that it's okay. We are all the same. And don't now move to this place of guilt and shame, because that's just going to blow the whole thing up for you. And so just enjoy the journey. I couldn't echo that more. Mm -hmm. And it's as we go on that excavation, and we're looking for that archaeology piece, as Dale mentioned, that the further we dig, the more you find. And eventually you'll find that artifact that you've always been looking for. And that dig sometimes takes a long time, and that's okay. And sometimes there's a lot of hard work in the Sahara Desert, but it's also, it's okay. You'll get there. Just keep digging. Dale, Trevor, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you, what Rob, a gift, and Rob. Susan, yeah, for in Elite Performance, you guys for for hosting all of these conversations and for having us on. A true pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone listening. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you all next week. Yeah.